This interview is made possible by The View Conference. I'm your host, Jerry Ors from Kids First, and right now we are with Bill Reeves. He is a technical director at Pixar who has worked on so many amazing Pixar films, ranging from Toy Story 4 to Finding Nemo, Toy Story 1, Ratatouille, Cars, and so many more. Before that, he worked on Pixar shorts, including Tin Toy, which was released in the 1980s and won the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. And even before that, he worked on very early Industrial Light and Magic hits like Young Sherlock Holmes and Star Trek Wrath of Khan. Bill, thank you so much for being here today. It's my pleasure, Jerry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you for listening to all my films. I don't have to do it anymore. I don't remember half of them, I don't think, at this point. <laughs> well, they were all incredible. And my first question, before all of that, you were getting education in a very STEM field, in mathematics. You know, that's definitely very different from Pixar and Industrial Light Magic. They use mathematics, they use computer science, but they're filmmaking companies. They make animated films and they make graphics for films. So can you talk a little bit about that transition from making research papers to helping making films? Yeah, I mean, it's it it wasn't that difficult to transition in the sense that the job I had, you know, at Lucasfilm in the beginning when I started um, in the field, and then what where I am now at Pixar is really a, you know, a technical a computer science uh, math oriented, uh, you know, uh, job. Um, I have to work with filmmakers and, and people who come up with creative ideas and, and draw and, you know, do all those kinds of things uh, on the creative side of things. Uh, but my day to day, you know, is writing code, debugging code, thinking about how to solve a particular problem that's happening in a particular film and, uh, you know, problem solving. And that's what math and computer science is all about, really, at the, at the heart of it, you know, or at least a big part of it. Um, so it, it, it really wasn't a, for me, you know, and, and I joined a group that was just perfect in, in a lot of ways. Like sometimes groups are, you know, there's a wall between them, you know, like the new guys, the old guys, or, uh, you know, or the new way, the old way, you know, like the old way of doing computer animation was, well, with a pencil and paper and ink and paint and whatever. And uh, here we are coming in saying, well, maybe we can use computers to help you make movies and help make different kinds of movies and different kinds of, of films. But, you know, the, you could have imagined, you know, a situation where it was really, you know, us and them kind of thing. And, uh, the, the great thing about, um, you know, the group we had was, uh, and, and the way we were set up at Lucasfilm and then at Pixar was really, uh, you know, very friendly and very open and very uh, creative. And uh, what we were able to do at Lucasfilm, for example, was um, show how digital effects, you know, uh, special effects di done digitally can uh, look really great and, and integrate into feature length films with live action backgrounds. And, you know, I mean, people had imagined doing that, but I think we were one of the very first groups to actually do that and show that, oh, wow, you know, you can do a rack focus on a digital character and cop it into a live action background of, of a church in shot in England. And, uh, it's seamless and it and it and it really works and and so we were given that chance you know to do that that's the that same glass man from uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, and you know um, that you, you know and then we also worked on Wrath of Khan where it was it was a monitor that was displaying our images so that was sort of separate any in in some sense but we were able to create an environment and a bit a look that I mean traditional effects at the time probably couldn't have done as as in, in that that vision you know that that look they could have done something different i'm sure uh, but they wanted something specific about a, a world transforming from a moon to an earth like plant you know that transformation so you know i mean um we were able to to slip in there and do a few things that were interesting and then we went off and did Pixar doing computer animated stories and whole films, you know, uh, all on computer, whereas the Lucasfilm people and the ILM people, they put together their own group to do, 
you know, digital effects and look where they went, Jurassic Park, uh, Terminator 2, uh, you know, all sort, you know, and Star Wars and it's everywhere now, you know, with uh, Avatar and, and all those films. I mean, you know, that's, you know, that's, I think we, we scratched the surface there in the beginning to help show the way of that, but it, it, it was, a, you know, that was a lot of fun to be able to do. And it, it's great to be able to say that in a way, you know, but I haven't done that in, in many, many, many years. So, but it, it, to, it, to try to answer your question again, you know, at the heart of what the job I do is, is really computer science and, and math, you know, using algebra and, Differential equations, you know, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, trigonometry, you know, all sorts of things that that is just at the core of of, of a real science kind of background. Mm. You know, I find it so amazing that, like you're saying, you're using differential equations, you're using algebra, you're using math that you learned in school to help make entertainment. There's such a crossover there that so many people don't think possible. You know, when someone goes into math, they think they'll never be able to make entertainment, help make something that people can sit down and watch and enjoy. And I love that your career is an example of, yes, you can do that. Now, before we talk a little bit more about the collaboration between Pixar artists and uh, technical creators, I want to ask you a question. You are talking a little bit about the skills needed to be in this, you know, the mathematics and the scientific skills. Do you think people who are designing the programs that artists use also need to be passionate about the craft, like the storytelling, the animation? Do you think they also need to have a passion and maybe even talents in that field as well? A passion is great. I mean, you know, a passion of, of loving movies and a loving storytelling and loving creating characters that, you know, are, uh, you know, uh, indelible in the world, you know, and, and, you know, Buzz and Woody, you know, I mean, like, I was part of that and, and my passion and doing that and creating those characters, helping create those characters, you know, uh, I wasn't, didn't do it alone by any means. Uh, but being part of that, you know, and that being part of that passion and creating, you know, passion, I mean, the, the passion of Pixar is creating movies and and um and and films that that people love and people make people happy which is a great thing to be doing in the world of today and and, and even before you know i mean and 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 in the future and so having a passion about it is certainly important uh you know in in the scheme of things um and then be able to use my talents you know, from the math side of things to help make that happen is just is the connection and make it. But, you know, I mean, yeah, if, if, if you hate movies and you hate watching TV and you hate video, yeah, you know, why, why are you working at Pixar, you know? Uh, so, so you need some kind of connection to, to the sort of the end product, if you will. But, but otherwise, you know, um, you don't need, you don't have to come into it having known how to write a story or what story arcs are or, or what, uh, how to develop a plot and, and you know, or, or how to design a character. Uh, you can pair up with someone or, or a team of people to, to make that happen. Mm. You know, I think that sense of teamwork really shows in Pixar films because there's talent all across the board. There's talent in uh, your field, the technically Pixar films, you know, off the charts. They win so many awards for a reason. They're exceptional. And in the story, equally exceptional. They're so entertaining for the entire audience. Now, I want to ask you a little bit about your process for developing the technology that's used. For example, Particle Systems, which you won a uh, Technical Academy Award for. What was the process for creating technology like that? For the audience who doesn't know, Particle Systems is basically a computational way of simulating a lot of individual particles together. It can be used to create fluids and smoke and fire. Basically, any major film that uses visual effects or animation, they probably use particles. Bill created that. So can you talk a little bit about your process for creating complex computations like that? Yeah, this goes back a long ways. I mean, the first use of particle systems was in 1982 uh, for Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan. Um, and, uh, you know, we had been, and this was in, in the computer, I was part of the computer division at Lucasfilm at the time. and. Uh, ILM, which is the special effects house of, of Lucasfilm, got the contract to do the effects for Star Trek II. And there, there was this story point where uh, Spock and, and Kirk were watching a video screen of this enemy's bad bomb that would, you know, uh, you know, wreak havoc on the, on the universe or something. I forget the real details, but, but anyway, so, but, um, 
And, um, you know, there was this, we, we, they came to us, we were the computer division doing, you know, trying to create technology to do um, effects and animation and whatever, but we didn't have a contract with ILM or anything, but they, they realized that this, this ass, this effect was, uh, was difficult for them to do and, and that they'd seen computer graphics before ours and other people's in the industry and, and thought, okay, maybe th these guys, you, us guys could, could actually do something there. So they came to us and pitched us the story and pitched us the, or the idea of what the effect should be. And um, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't working on particle systems before that, before that pitch came in, you know, I mean, I was, I was developing core software, if you will. But I remember sitting around the room the, um, after getting the pitch and the, just the meeting room, and we were all talking about what could we do. And, and you know, we knew there was this, this basically this planet, this moon-like planet at the beginning of the, of the piece and an Earth-like planet at the end of the piece. And people around the room would say, I'll do the moon. And another person said, I'll do the stars in the background. And another person said, I can do the, I can do the earth, which uh, Lauren Carpenter said that. And it was like, he's, he's an amazing guy and he could do this fractal kind of uh, earth-like thing. Um, and um, somebody said, I'll do the little rocket ship kind of thing. And, uh, but, but they need, there needed to be this thing that transitioned from the moon to the earth. And, and the idea that came up was sort of this, the, the, the bomb exploded and so everybody thought well fire and um, I remember just sitting there for a couple seconds and, and then I said then I just said I'll do the fire uh, not knowing how to do the fire not knowing how to do anything but uh, let me give a go at the, at the fire because I was sort of the last one to, or the, la the last part of that to, to kick in and um, People going and looked at me and went, what, are you sure? You know, really? You, want, you know, whatever. And yeah, you know, I give it a try. Uh, I got a few ideas just, just thinking about it here in the last couple of minutes. And so off I went and, and uh, tried to come up with what, what, would, what would it take to, to do sort of a, an explosion and then a traveling set of fire that envelops the planet. And, um, you know, over the course of a couple of weeks, I think it was, you know, in talking to other people in the group and, and uh, you know, I mean, even though it was my problem, we all solved problems together, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, an idea came out of that and I started writing some code to sort of demonstrate what it might look like and, and it just evolved from there, you know. Um, and the math in it was was so simple, you know, there was very little, <laughs> you know, it was more writing code to do a simple idea. Um, the particle system just in general is a really simple idea. You can, you can make it be complicated by trying to figure out, well, how do the particles really move in, in com complex ways? And, and, but mine was just like little volcanoes that they go up and, and then they come back down, sort of follow a parabola, you know? Um, and so, uh, it just evolved and, and then I guess the other trick was well how do you color them what's the color of the thing and uh, the trick was well they're fire so they you don't have to you don't have to shade them they don't have to you can just add them together they're little particles of, of fire so you just start adding them together you give them a little color and it, they change color over time because they cool and that was that was that part of it. And you just add them together and then you comp them on top of the moon or on top of the earth and, and you're done sort of, that was like six months of work. I mean, <laughs> I'm collapsed into uh, three minutes of explanation, but uh, yeah, so that was that. Um, and, and then a couple, a year and a half later, we were doing this piece called Andre, uh, the adventures of Andre and Wally B. And this was our first character piece we wanted to do. And this was not for ILM or Lucas, so it was, it was the computer division's own little um, project to sort of show what we could do with characters. And we had two characters, Andre and Wally B. And, but the set we wanted to show this in was sort of a wooded scene, you know, sort of off in the woods um, somewhere uh, where these characters lived, I guess. And uh, trying to figure out, well, woods, that means trees. Well, how do we do trees? 
And I said, well, I know how to, I could, I could take a crack at trees. I'm going to use particle systems to do trees because the leaves are just little particles. I mean, the trunks will be geometry. There will be surfaces and the branches and everything, but the leaves will be just little, little particles. They, they won't be round necessarily, and they won't they'll be long or, or, you know, sort of shaped like a leaf if I can get that, or just a little, little dot if, if I needed to. And uh, so I decided I'll go, go at the, at the trees with, uh, with particle systems. And then, so that's what turned into sort of my, uh, so, I mean, basically I wrote, wrote a paper about the fire stuff. And then I wrote another paper about the part uh, the trees. And those were sort of my two particle system papers and, uh, you know, worked out. They look, I mean, you know, you look back at both, both effects these days and, you know, boy, that's pretty hokey. That's pretty, you know, uh, low tech, if you will, however you want to describe it. But, for the time, it was it was pretty convincing, and and uh, especially for you know like the Andre and B, Wally B one because it was it wasn't a special effect. It wasn't comped in over live action or anything. It was just it was a, it was sort of a it was an animation. It was it was a world that we created that that could be uh, stylized in all sorts of ways. So the trees sort of fit into that mold of of stylization, just like the characters did. You know, the characters were a bee. Wally B didn't really look like a bee. He looked like a what did he look like? I don't know. Something big, honking. He had, he had this big stinger on the back of him. John wanted a, a big sort of menacing kind of stinger. So, anyways. You know, what I love about what you're saying is things like uh, getting the particles to go in a parabola or getting them to make leaves on trees. That is so fundamental in particle systems today. It's just a few clicks of a button on a software, on any 3D software. It's just a few clicks and you can get that. And you never really consider the fact that all of this had to be invented. And like you said, really just to solve problems. Now, you also talked about before working on particle systems, you were working on the core software. Uh, for example, Pixar's core software, Marinette, which you also won a Technical Academy Award for. Now, that is a very complex piece of software, but it's not used by scientists, it's not used by engineers, it's used by artists. It's basically a paintbrush that you had to design and build. So could you talk a little bit about the process for developing software specifically designed for artists to use? Mm. Yeah, maybe that's sort of a, a di totally different direction. My brain had to, to switch uh, a lot to sort of, you know, deal with some of those issues that, that you are well pointed out to, to do. The marionette, or we called it, um, we called it Menvi. We're not, not, I was not supposed to use that word in, in the beginning, but we, what we did, we published papers with it in it, so it's okay. M-E-N-V, standing for modeling environment. It's kind of a stupid name, but, uh, and, um, so back up, backing up a little bit, we actually had a system at Lucasfilm to do the Star Trek piece in and uh, uh, to do the um, uh, Andre and Wally B and, and uh, also Sherlock Holmes. I mean, several of our early films were done in a, a system called MD, Motion Dynamics, I think it was, uh, written by a colleague, Tom Duff. Um, and uh, I helped, you know, sort of code some of that at, at certain points along the way, but um, I was more working on, on the particle system stuff and sort of core software for uh, the computer division in general. Sorry, my hat keeps, I don't usually wear a hat, but my hair is terrible, you know, uh, these days. So I uh, just, okay. So anyways, um, so we had this early system and it was really, you know, primitive and simple and, and all sorts of things. But um, John Lasseter came in to do Andre and Wally B and he actually used that system to, to animate to and animate that, that piece and several other pieces. Uh, I think um, even uh, Luxo Jr. was done in, in that piece, in that system. And the great thing is we had John on board really early on um, as a user as a client essentially for the software we wanted to write. So we would sit down with him and soon, soon after we became Pixar, uh, Andrew Stanton joined the company and Pete Docter joined the company. So we had three, <laughs> and those names now are resonate around the animation world in terms of core talent in, in computer animation. And uh, we were so lucky to, to bring those people on and to think of them as our users when we were writing the, the, the marionette system. 
Um, and so we we basically th said, this is a system for animators. It's it's not for us to use. You know, it's not. We're not going to use it to do special effects. We're not going to use it to do particle systems. Even you know where there's there's all sorts. I mean, it, it's it's a system to, for animators to sit down and massage and time the animation that um, that they want to want to put on screen. And so. Uh, you know, we we treated them as their clients. We we tried to make uh, uh, make it be so easy to use as possible, um, and so uh, forgiving, you know, if you will, along the way. And uh, and uh, but but uh, it's a sense, it's a, on the other hand, we we wanted to make it be very flexible. I think that was another thing that was really important in our design. And so we started with something really simple. Like MD was really simple, so we sort of replicated what MD did in, as the first version. But we knew that we wanted, you know, version 10 and 20 and 30 eventually, uh, which we got to, you know, by the time uh, we were done with uh, with Marionette. And uh, so, you know, uh, we made it very extensible, so we could add new things or we could change things around and and make it be better and better as the, as the as the, our experience grew and as you added more people and, and got more good ideas uh, to, to, to put into the system. So uh, I think uh, the last film that used Marionette was uh, Toy Story 3. And Brave, the film after that, was the first film to use Presto. With Presto, we, well, by, by that era, which is well, two th the two thousand somewhere in there, um, you know, everybody decided, okay, we need to gut the system. I mean, you know, there are things we want to do that we we just can't make the old system, the marionette system, do. So, so they started on a new version of Presto, or a new version of software called Presto, or is now called Presto. Um, and uh, so, but but Brave was the first system uh, film to use that system, but. I didn't participate in a lot of the coding on, on the Presto system. Um, I was working on the films much more than, than uh, developing the software at, the, at that time by then, by then. You know, it's funny now that we see softwares that have gotten so much more complicated, but also much easier to learn. Uh, for the audience, if you're interested in learning 3D animation, Blender is an open source 3D software that has a lot of features that other professional softwares have, including the features that a lot of Pixar softwares have. So check out that if you're interested. And also, the VIEW conference has actually done an interview re very recently with Dylan Sision, who is on the RenderMan team, and he talked a little bit about the future of Pixar technology related to NPR, non-physically based graphics. Make sure to check out that interview as well. But Bill, looking ahead at the future, Pixar is definitely changing in the future. The entire animation world is constantly changing, and there are more and more people going into science technology, you know, STEM fields, that are interested in getting in these entertainment worlds. So. What advice would you give to the next generation of technical artists, of programmers, of software developers? What advice would you give to them? Well, I mean, um, certainly learn your craft, you know, so if you're in science and technology and whatever, I mean, get a good foundation for that. Um, Cause like we said earlier in the interview, you know, you never know if you're gonna use those differential equations and you may never, you know, I mean, you know, maybe maybe that's something that you, when you get, if you get into the field, never use, but you might. I mean, those are used in a lot of uh, the effects kinds of things, like if you're doing a fire or if you're doing water or, or all sorts of things like that, and you, you're trying to build CG to do that, you, you need to use that stuff. I mean, maybe that's part of the software package you do and you, you're not actually coding it up, but but you need to understand it. So anyways, but but even the the simple things like um, I don't know I mean trig and and uh, you know algebra and all sorts of stuff um, is really important and and just I mean you know I, you don't need to memorize it you do, it doesn't need to be you know implanted into your brain so that you can just snap and it, it's there I mean I go back to my books and reference material all the time and search the web for solutions of of things but you, it's it's great to have a good foundation and a good starting place for as much as possible. So get the breadth, even, even something like pure math, which you might think is like, oh man, you know, what's this all about? Or, or statistics, actually statistics is really an interesting one. We use statistics a lot, 
you know, and, and, and learning about what we did and what, where we're going and what we need to do and stuff like that. So, so anyways, um, so get a good breadth in, in your, in, in your core. And then, uh, uh, but if you're interested in this kind of field, established, like we talked about earlier too, a, a passion, a love for, for the arts and for, uh, you know, the filmmaking or, or whatever aspect of things, uh, you want to do, uh, and if you have talent in that area, it's not your major, but it could be your minor. There's no no pr problem in you know having a minor in you know illustration or, or painting or or, or doing a, an animated piece or or something like that. There's no harm in, in doing that, and and in fact, it's it's a it's somewhat of a plus, you know, if you if you have that experience. So. Um, but you don't necessarily need it. I'm just saying that that it's 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 good to have, it's good to have an appreciation of, of what that's all about. Um, what else to say about uh, you know getting into the field? I mean, um, you know, go to a good school, um, you know that that has a track record of of, of uh, you know creating graduates who go into the field, if you can track down a school that does that. Um, and uh, and then, uh, you know, I mean, a, a teamwork, I mean, be part, try to be part of a team, you know, if you, uh, in some way or another, whether it's a, a, a CG project or not, it, it could be a project in machine learning, it could be a project in, in uh, uh, you know, all sorts of things like that, that, you know, something completely different, uh, but, but be, be part of a team and understand what that's about and how to, how to, how to work that, you know, and it'll be different when you get to Pixar, you know, the, the teams will be different and the dynamics, but, but, but on the other hand, they, they will be a lot the same. So anyway, so that's another thing that I like to tell people to, to really appreciate and, and understand what it means to be part of a team and part of a, a group of people trying to solve a problem because just like you know we started almost started with i mean at pixar the the art ins inspires the technology and the technology inspires the art and uh it's a saying that john lasser always used to say and I'll, I'll crib from him no problems and you know and it's true i mean you know it's like we get together and, and together we can make these films you know so um I think Did I answer your question? No, absolutely. That answered the question. I think that's some really amazing advice. Sadly, that is all the time we have. Bill, thank you so much for talking to me all about your career and your work. Jerry, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. For our audience, make sure to check out all of Bill's works, all of Bill's films. If you're interested in Industrial Light and Magic, we just recently did an interview with Rob Brado. He's the head of ILM. Check out that interview for more information about what Industrial Light and Magic is doing today. They have some amazing work going on. And if you're interested in Pixar, we also just did an interview with Sharon Callahan. She is a director of photography at Pixar, and she has some really amazing work going on there. So make sure to check out that interview as well. This interview was made possible by the VIEW Conference. The VIEW Conference is a yearly event that is going on both online and in person. It's happening between October 18th and October 23rd. For information about it, go to viewconference.it. I'm your host, Jerry Ors from Kids First. Bye.